Well, welcome back to the channel. This is the third in a series of tutorials for the Flight FX Citation 10. Some call it Citation X. And the idea of my videos are to help people who are brand new to this airplane. This is the video. These are the videos that I was looking for when I first bought this plane and wish they were there. And when they weren't, I decided, well, maybe it was my turn to contribute to the community. So the first two videos are just very simple beginner stuff, how to get from cold and dark up to altitude, the simplest, shortest way without going deep into systems, just the, the basic things you need to know to fly it. The second video is from altitude down to landing, same kind of an idea. And now I'm coming back here with this third video and I'm going to focus this one just around setting up the flight management computer or flight management system. Um, go a little slower than I did in the first video so that um, it all makes sense to you. So I'm here at Midway Airport in Chicago and I've already created a flight plan on SimBrief that takes us from Chicago to Columbus, Ohio and uh, that's the one we're gonna load up so let's jump inside the plane and get going so here we are inside the plane and uh, i've got some ground power connected so we're gonna get this thing turned on turn on our standby power arm our emergency lights turn on the batteries turn on the external power the avionics and the icas and that's pretty much all we need. If, if uh, you aren't using external power, you just go over here and uh, fire up the APU. That'll be in my, is in my first video. So let's uh, zoom in to the FMC and get going. As soon as it comes alive, you're gonna be greeted with this nav ident uh, page. And that essentially just tells the plane where you are so that it gets a fix on where you are located in the world and can plan everything from there. So just click this soft button here next to pause in it. Uh, this just has basic information, lets you know that you have all of the right, um, uh, the right charts and those kinds of things loaded up. So we'll go here and in about five seconds, it'll give me the GPS position. Good news, it lasts where we, it's the same place where we parked it. We're gonna load that up. And this is where I take a little bit of a deviation from the manual for this plane. It takes you immediately to the flight plan and putting in all of your waypoints. I think I found a little bit of a shortcut and that's kind of what I use. So here we are, we know we're at Midway and we're gonna to go to uh, Columbus John Glenn International and that's KCMH. So we're gonna load that up as our destination. And uh, then we're gonna go over here to the nav button. This is my shortcut. I go to nav hit the departure button and uh, put in my runway. I'm gonna be leaving 20, uh, 22 left, which isn't on this screen, so you just move over to the next page. There it is. The next thing it's gonna ask us for is what SID we want, what instrument departure we want. And in this case, it will be, there will be no departure. It is a direct. Let me see if there are some options. I'm looking here at Navigraph. By the way, if you don't have a Navigraph subscription, it is totally worth it. Yeah, I'm actually going to use a departure because this runway goes southwest, and so we're going to have to vector ourselves over to the first waypoint anyway. So I'm going to uh, add the CISR 4 departure. So we'll select that right here, and uh, we don't have any transitions beyond that that are available so we've done everything we need to do we're going to activate our departure now I'm going to come back over to nav and I'm going to do the same thing with arrival now if you're using online ATC this could very well change but I go ahead and do it from the beginning as well and we are going to be landing on one zero right tonight and uh, by the way, as I'm sitting here working on this video, uh, John Glenn Airport is actually landing on one zero right tonight. So uh, my house is just below 
the final approach to one zero right. So I've been outside actually watching planes go in for a while. So we're gonna use one zero right and we are going to land on the ILS. So here are the different one zero right approaches you could use. We're gonna use ILS tonight. Uh, we're gonna use, um, I think we're gonna have to use vectors. Let me take a look here over on Navigraph. So ILS one zero right. Yeah, we're gonna be on some vectors coming in. I'm still gonna go ahead and use this transition here. And you can look at charts to find this stuff out as well. Just what I do is look at the pathways and see what makes the most sense. Um, I'm gonna use this one. It's kind of a, it's not a short final, it's a long final. So it gives me plenty of time to make sure I'm completely set up. So we're gonna select this one. And our star, uh, which is a, uh, an arrival, standard arrival route uh, on our flight plan is Dublin 1. And we are going to use, according to our flight plan, the Brian transition. So that should give us everything we need for when we're coming in to Columbus. It looks good to me. Just kind of look it over one more time and then activate. So you see what, what taking that little shortcut does is it gives you a head start on your flight plan and then there's fewer waypoints to put in. Uh, tell you what, putting waypoints in manually, one at a time, is such a challenge. It takes a while to do, and I like having this shortcut. So you can see we've already got all these in that we wouldn't have to ordinarily put in. So go back to the flight plan, and we're now going to put in the waypoints along the way that are not included in here. So we are going to pick up, according to our flight plan, with Lukey. And see this discontinuity? This tells us that it doesn't know where to go from here to here. So that's what we're going to put in our plan right now. So Lukey, L-E-W-K-E, -E, is our next waypoint. I must have spelled it wrong. Didn't like that, so I just dropped down one. Now you see that it looks like we're out of space, so just go over here to the next page. And the next one we're gonna put in is G-I-J. So it's G-I-J. We'll put that right on top of Brian and move it down. Our next one is so to S-E-W-T-O. -E put that in on top of Brian, move Brian down. And our next one is FWA, FWA, put that on top of Brian, move it down, go to the next page. And from Brian, we go into the Dublin one and it's already here. So we are with all of our waypoints now in and we can just follow that on out, make sure it looks good. This is the vector we're gonna have. That's why we have this discontinuity that ultimately gets us to that arrival that we chose a little bit earlier all the way in to runway 10, uh, 10, right? I don't know if I can get rid of this discontinuity or not. Yep, there it goes. So now we have it, we're gonna come out and fly some vectors. If you're using online ATC, they'll give you the vectors. Otherwise, you just kind of make up your own and uh, find your way over to that next waypoint. All right, now that we have all of that in, we're gonna begin our performance uh, information. So we'll go to the performance in it, which was just down here on the last page. There's really nothing here you could change. If it's blue, you can change it, but um, pretty much we're just gonna go with the defaults here. And there are four pages. You just make your way through them. This climb, cruise, and descent, these are very standard for this plane, but there are options that you can choose. Take a look at the flight FX manual and it'll describe all the different options. Why would you have a different option? Well, this climb right here is pretty economical. It's a slow climb up to altitude. Uh, you could create it so it had a very fast climb up to altitude, for example. So whatever um, works best for your performance. This standard stuff, 
it's pretty good on every single flight. Let's go over here to page three. This is our transition altitude. Uh, that is standard in the United States, a couple places in Europe, but there are other places where this, this flight level cha uh, transition altitude change is different. You can find that on the charts. Some uh, speed and altitude limits as we go, and then our initial cruise altitude, this is our optimum. Now, don't let this confuse you in that this should be the flight level that your flight plan shows. This just shows what the optimum level is. Let's go to the next page. When, if there's dashes, it needs information. So when I look at my flight plan, I have eight passengers on this flight. So I'm gonna click the eight here and then come on up and put that in. It'll calculate that weight. Cargo, um, my flight plan shows that I have 550 pounds of cargo. So we'll pop that in there so we can get our gross weight correct. Now we've done everything in this first page. Let's continue. It, it's really great. It tells you where to go next. So we'll go to confirm the init. And this is, uh, this is all information that we have put in. Uh, this is, uh, the estimated amount of time that we'll be en route. So 33 minutes actually en route on this short flight. Um, and then this is the fuel we need. And this is, um, this is kind of a margin of error number for, for fuel. Now we're gonna go to the next page here. And this is also information that we have already uh, put in and this is summarizing it for us as well. We're gonna go to the takeoff page and I really recommend that when you're learning to fly this plane, set your simulator on clear skies. And uh, it's just easier to learn things like landing, takeoff, those kinds of things. I, that's how I have this one set. And um, I'm gonna go over to, well, I already set the temperature for the EFB. So 14 degrees uh, centigrade, 58 Fahrenheit. This is our uh, setting for our barometric pressure because we are at clear skies. And we don't have any wind, so I just put in 360 at zero. Or, uh, and it goes in right here, and then that just essentially says we don't have any wind. We'll go to the next page. This tells us about the runway. See, it's green, so there's not much we can change here, although we can flip these two in case it's raining. But this is all information about the airport where we are. Let's go over to page three. This is additional settings for the airplane. Um, any ice is not needed today. Flaps 15 is the most typical flap setting for this plane when you take off. In fact, I don't think I've ever had a performance that needed flaps five, but um, that option is there. So we've got everything we need. We're gonna confirm that. And now we're at our takeoff data. And we just take a look at this stuff and it looks like things we've already put in. This is our takeoff weight that we calculated earlier. Uh, the runway is this length in feet. We need about half of that runway, so we're good there. Let's go to the next page. And it gives us our V speeds. Um, the great news is that these V speeds, V1, rotate, and V2, will all be transferred to the PFD automatically. You don't have to do that yourself. The next step after takeoff, obviously, is climb. So we're gonna go over here to climb, and this is where we put in our altitude at which we're gonna fly. So I'm gonna look at the flight plan, and it is 390, so I'm gonna put in flight level 390 as our altitude. And uh, these other things, we set this earlier. Um, we're gonna keep these as well, so that's gonna be our climb, and now we're gonna go on over to cruise. We know what our cruise altitude is uh, because we put it in on the previous one and we're all set. So that pretty much sets up the FMC for takeoff. And uh, I wanna show you one other thing that's really great. If you have a SimBrief account, which is free, so you really should have it for flight planning. Instead of going through all of those waypoints one at a time, let me show you the shortcut. Remember how over here on nav, we put in our departure and our arrival? Did you happen to see this one right here? That is SimBrief. So if you have generated your flight in SimBrief, you can click this button right here, and then there'll be a second button to actually load that in. And then that makes everything so much faster. Uh, all the other setup is exactly the same as you've just seen here. The thing that changes is putting in those different waypoints along the way. 
So there you go. That'll get you up and moving. I'll come back with a fourth video uh, sometime soon that will do the same thing on this FMS to get us from altitude all the way in and we'll do all the settings for landing. I hope this is helpful to you. Leave me a comment or two. Let me know um, other ways that I can try to be helpful as you really, really enjoy this plane. I'll tell you what, the truth is I have all the PMDG planes and other kinds of things like that. Right now, I am just hooked on this Citation um, 10. It is so much fun to fly. Uh, before I go, I want to show you one other thing on the flight plan I did not mention before. If you have been used to flying some of the commercial jets and you see something like this in your legs page, that means something didn't set up right and you're, you're not ready to go. So when I first started flying this plane and I saw this, it was like, something's not right. What's going on? It's different in this one. The only things you're going to see here are constraints. So if there is a constraint that is required, you will see those here. Otherwise, it's just going to follow the typical speeds for that flight plan. If you would happen to get from air traffic control that you need to go a certain speed or be at a certain altitude, these are blue. So you can come in here and put them in. If you want to do a speed, you put the speed and a slash and drop it in. If you want to do an altitude, you do a slash and the altitude and drop it in. If you need to do both, you put in the speed, slash, altitude, and drop it in. And that'll get you where you want to go. Good luck. Let me know how you're doing and have a great time flying. We'll see you on the next one.